Uh, hello, this is Stephen Cook again. And uh, in our last video, we did an introduction to why uh, blades dip and dive or our how to stop them specifically. And we broke it down into five things. Uh, sharp, set, uh, flat blade, your roller guys need to be good, and the alignment of your wheels. And so I want to start back and, and talk about the sharpness of the blade. Uh, very important, if you have a dull blade, it, it's going to dip and dive. Uh, blades start at a peak if they're sharp like they should be and then they get dull, more and more dull, duller <laughs> uh, as they move along until they get to a point where you, you can't saw anymore. Now technically uh, you're better off to take that blade off before it gets to its maximum dullness because you are building up stress in the blade. Stresses in the blade will cause the blade to break earlier or prematurely. Uh, so as you, as you get the blade more and more dull, and you may find that uh, we think three or four hours is a good time to take it off and then sharpen it back uh, rather than getting it extremely dull. Uh, again, because of the stresses, it sharpens faster. You can just go around it a lot quicker and touch it up, and you're keeping a sharp blade. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're sawing expensive wood, grade lumber and different things, uh, one, one miscut and you ruin a $10, 20 $30 board, uh, you're better off to take that blade off a little earlier and sharpen it, especially if you have uh, a sharpener. Some people run them a little bit longer when they, uh, when they don't have a sharpener and they're sending them off to get sharpened, but, but ultimately they probably get a little shorter life because they're running them extra dull. I know there are occasions, especially in resaw operations, where you may have several heads, uh, uh, one behind the other, and you're, you're sawing pallet wood or something. You want to run that blade at least eight hours. You want to get a full run and not stop and stop your production. So I'm not saying you can't do that or that a blade won't do that. I'm just saying for the better uh, life of the blade. Now, I'm holding this blade right here, and if we can look at it, uh, when I say sharp, really all that, all that uh, comes into play in sharp is this very, very, very tip top part of the tooth there. You can see that it's hardened down here deeper, but the very tip point is what's so critical. And the very face of it, the very edges of it, and of course we know we have right, left, and straight teeth. Well, this one right here, that is actually, as I'm looking to the face of it, it's a left hand um, uh, tooth. I want to know that it's sharp on this very point corner out here, the, the, the very uh, edge. It needs to be very sharp. One way you see dullness is that they get a little shiny. Basically it gets blunt and you can see the shininess on it. When it's very sharp, you, you can't really see that bluntness and, and it's just a keen point. It's very critical. Sometimes you, you need a magnifying glass to look at that thing. Am I getting it sharp? Once you do it a while, uh, then you'll know. But that is, uh, that is just the very tip is what saws the wood. Your gullet and the face, all of those things are important. There even is uh, something uh, th that we think was a myth uh, where people said, used to say you have to grind the gullet. We do like to grind the gullet, but the, the, um, uh, the purpose of the gullet is to carry the sawdust out. And the grinding of it keeps it a little more square, so it'll drag that sawdust out as opposed to being worn. Uh, the, the myth was that if you didn't grind the gullet, the, blade, the blades would break. But there's other causes for the break of the blade. It's not that the sawdust is wearing it hard or anything, because a grind rock making sparks uh, is a lot harder than the sawdust. So, and we've proven that over time. But anyway, the very tip point, uh, don't run your blades way too long before you sharpen them, and you'll get the maximum life and the best cutting out of it. So, so that's the key. The very tip points is what we're after on our sharpening. 